Hi, this is Evan Eastend in New Zealand, and we're going to talk again about ball turning attachments. We've done two videos. The first one talked about how to actually use a ball turning attachment, and the second one talks about how to actually construct one. And finally, the third video is about making a thread which um, is required to be concentric with the lathe, and rather than using a die which is likely to come out crooked, I'm using single point turning to make a metric thread on the imperial lathe and decided to include that in the video. So this is it. Although I'm making an 8mm thread here, I measured a standard bolt and found that actually it was about 7.8mm in diameter, not 8mm, and that allows quite a lot of clearance inside the thread. And we should do the same thing when we're preparing our shaft ready for turning a thread. So I'm turning it down now to 7.8. Checking with the calipers we see the diameter is 8.35 and we want it down to 7.8. And in order to make this thread I'm using my own uh, Ride the Gear tra Train free online software which is available for working out the gear train for cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe or any, actually any thread. Um, and basically you need to put in the pitch of the thread and it'll show you what gears to use. So it shows uh, 24 possible solutions for a 1.25 millimeter pitch using the gear wheels I actually own and I'm going to use a second row here because those gears are actually already sitting on my gear train. There are 20 stud, 127 and 100 uh, compound gears for metric inversion and a 56 tooth gear on the lead screw position and also it shows the gearbox setting. This is for a lathe with a gearbox but it'll be actually even more useful for lathes that don't have a gearbox. And it shows you the actual layout of the gears and the gear train so that you can't go wrong here. And here's the gear train. It's actually been set up for imperial threads using the big metric conversion wheel just as an idler wheel. Here's the 22 stud gear meshing with the idler gear and this is the lead screw gear with its 56 teeth. Here you can see more clearly the 127 tooth gear being used as an idler, not actually contributing to the gear ratio. The compound gears 127 divided by 100 is 1.27 multiplied by 2 gives you 2.54 which is the number of centimetres in one inch. So this gives you the metric inversion. Now we're going to set up the gearbox on the boxed lathe and it says to use a B1 setting on the gearbox. So if we move the left hand lever to the B position and the right hand lever to number one column. And there we have our gearbox setting. This will produce the 1.25 millimeter pitch that we need for the eight millimeter thread. Next we'll return to the gear train and set it up according to the specifications and ride the gear train. So previously I had the um, 56 tooth gear sitting on its key here and connected to this large 127 tooth gear but I was only using it as an idler to connect this gear to that gear and this one wasn't actually doing anything apart from transmitting power across and the number of teeth passing into this gear here is the same as the number of pass teeth per minute passing into this gear so it doesn't actually do anything uh, but I now wanted to do something I want it to act as a metric conversion gear so I need to put the spacer in here so that it doesn't no longer meshes with that gear, but it's now out here meshing with this gear. So I'll put this um, 56 tooth gear back on. There we go. And this washer nut. Now we can mesh the compound gears with both the lead screw gear and stud gear. And uh, I had loosened this nut here, which is a clamp for the whole banjo. So if that's loose, you can move this up and down. And we'll push it up there. 
It's Halloween shortly and the goblin's gone into my camera. Ready for screw cutting. I'm adjusting the uh, dial here to zero uh, with the tool just touching the surface of the work so that uh, that's my reference point. Actually, I've been using the cross slide for advancing a tool while screw cutting, but actually you produce better results, particularly in hard material like steel, if you use the uh, compound slide set on 30 degrees for a 60 degree angle thread. Uh, because that cuts on one side of the thread only and not on the other side and produces a much nicer result. In two previous YouTube videos I explained how to install a direct current treadmill motor in your lathe and uh, in a second video about how to control it with the Pulsewood modulator controller and uh, this is really great for screw cutting because you can slow it right down as you approach the end and stop precisely where you want to and just at the flick of a switch put it in reverse and wind it back out again. Um, and by the way when you're doing metric threads on an imperial lathe you cannot use the dial indicator. You can see just next to my arm there on the next to the bed there's a dial. That's the dial indicator and you can't use that when you're doing metric threads on the imperial lathe. Here I'm putting some a marker using a marker pen to um, put some ink on the surface of the material before I cut the thread and it really makes the thread stand out especially when you do the first um, batch cut. Another general rule when you're cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe or imperial threads on a metric lathe once you've engaged the half nuts on the lead screw you cannot disengage because they won't get back into the exact same position again. So instead we run the motor backwards and just wind back. It's a good idea to withdraw the tool slightly out of the groove because there may be some play in the mechanism which means the tool will track back on a different path than it went into the thread with. So uh, you don't want it going along and damaging your thread. So it's best to disengage the tool while you wind it back and then re-engage it again. It's handy to put a felt tip marker on your, on your uh, dial on the cross slide or compound slide so you can come back to the same point or add a little bit more to it. You may notice that when I'm winding back I go well past the beginning of the thread and that's because when I turn it into forwards motion again it's, there's a little bit of slack that needs to be taken up and we need to take that up before the tool actually hits the thread. So it's good to leave a little bit of a gap there for it to do that in rather than stopping right on the very end of the thread. There is a bit of spring in the material and um, the tool will cause it to deflect a bit and, and uh, chatter or vibrate on the material causing a rough finish so you can get a smoother finish by bringing the tail block into play with the, with the center. I decided to run a die over the surface to clean it up and get the diameter just right and so I'm using this uh, die holder that goes in the tail stock to keep it well aligned with the center of the lathe and you can of course change the dies in the die holder and run it over the thread. This die holder is made of stainless steel and it's knurled for hand holding but it's got a small hole on the top there that you can place a bar in if you need to. And this is where we find out whether the arrow bar stock will run true once it's screwed onto this shaft. Well, I hope you liked this series on ball turning. And if you did, you can give me a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. Or perhaps even consider subscribing on uh, Patreon to support this uh, series of videos on how to use an engineer's lathe.